Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 24 of my Logic Pro 11 Essentials course. In this video, we're going to talk about arrangement techniques and I'll show you two methods of using markers, both regular markers along with arrangement markers. So markers can be found in the global tracks and the global tracks can be accessed by pressing G or you can click this button right here and you'll see there's a global track for standard markers. These are more used just for like labeling sections. And then there's arrangement markers, which can also be used for labeling sections, but also have a whole extra functionality to them where you can actually use them to move content around in your project. Now, personally, I prefer standard markers over arrangement markers, but I'm gonna show you both techniques, uh, both methods in this video, and you can decide for yourself which one you prefer. And we're also gonna jump into some of the cut insert time edit functions that are really helpful for building out musical arrangements. So for this video, I'm just using a quick demo instrumental project that's made with all logic loops. And so what you might start off with is something like this, where you have each of the sections built out, but they're not in the correct order. None of the sections are repeated and the song arrangement has not been fleshed out. So we're gonna go over that in this video. Before I get to that though, I need to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, Boombox. If you're a musician, solo artist, maybe you're in a band or you're a producer or mix engineer, you've gotta give Boombox a try. You get secure file storage for audio files and full DAW sessions. You can invite others to your projects where they can collaborate with you remotely using Boombox's built-in time-stamped commenting features. And I find it really helpful for working with mix clients because I can keep all of their mix revisions and comments all in one place. And as a promotional tool, you can create your own artist page to get your music out to the world, network with other musicians and producers around the world, and you can even mark yourself for hire if you're looking for paid gigs. And that's just the basics. There's a suite of AI tools to help you with creating music. You can draw up contracts and manage royalty splits and more. Head over to boombox.io today to sign up and get four gigabytes of free storage or upgrade to one of their paid plans if you need additional storage or you wanna tap into Boombox's pro and premium features. Okay, so let's start with markers. To get started, again, you're gonna press G to open up your global tracks. And you may see more than just the markers in your global tracks, or you may not see the markers at all. If you want to hide global tracks or show global tracks, you can right click or control click in this area here, and you can select which global tracks you want to see. And you can also uh, trim this down to just one global track at a time. I'm going to get rid of my tempo track, my signature track and my chord track, and we'll just view the marker and arrangement tracks. So this first section here is going to be a verse. This is going to be like a chorus or like an, it's gonna be an instrumental in the beginning, but it's gonna be used as a chorus later. This will be the verse. This will be a bridge uh, that comes after the second or third chorus. And then this is an outro. So let's start by labeling these with markers. So I'm just gonna put my playhead right here at bar one. And then I'll click the plus button here to create a new marker. And then you can double click to give that marker a name. I'm a big fan of typing in all caps just because I'm getting old and my eyes can't see tiny text sometimes. And then you're just gonna set your playhead where you want the next marker to go. Click the plus button again, double click and type in the name of that section and hit return to confirm. Additionally, the shift comma and period Shortcuts are really helpful here to jump back and forth by eight bars at a time. If your song is indeed in eight bar phrases, not all songs are in eight bar phrases. So I could jump from the chorus over to my verse here. And instead of pressing the plus button, there's actually a shortcut to create a new marker. And that is option apostrophe. So it'll create a new marker at the playhead. So I'll call this uh, verse. Let's jump over eight bars, option apostrophe, double click. Let's call this bridge. And there's one other way you can create markers. If you make a selection over a region or multiple regions, you can come over here to the marker track and you can select create markers from regions. And look at that, you can create a marker there automatically. It's automatically colorized and everything. I'm gonna undo that. I'm just gonna create it manually. So again, option apostrophe, and we'll call this the outro. Now, 
what I need to do at this point is I need to trim up the end of the outro marker. And probably the easiest way to do that is use your bar snap and then just hold command and click where you want to trim that marker. You can grab the right side of the marker and bring it in as well, and you can extend it. But if you just hold command and click somewhere, it'll trim up that marker. The other markers will be okay. The overlapping markers will automatically get trimmed. But if you do wanna come in here and manually trim these, uh, you can do that as well. Okay, so I've got my five markers. Let's colorize the markers so they're a little easier to view. I'm gonna press option C to bring up my color palette. Then I can click on a marker. I can give it a color, click on another one, give that a different color, and so forth and so on, all the way down the line. And if you hide the global tracks, you'll still be able to see these markers up here on the ruler at the top of the timeline. And I really find that colorizing the markers helps me to see those a bit easier. Now with standard markers, when you start moving around the content in a section, it's not going to move the marker. And I actually pr prefer that. If you don't like that, you can use arrangement markers, which I'll, you know, again, I'll come back to later on. But let's build out our arrangement in the order that we want. What I want this to be is intro, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, and then out. So the first chorus is really just going to be like an instrumental section, and then it'll be verse and then the first real chorus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my locators, my cycle range around a section or multiple sections that I want to sort of copy and paste and insert. There's a whole set of edit features under edit and then cut insert time that are really helpful for this. These do have shortcuts for them. Admittedly, I almost never memorize these, uh, but you can choose to cut a section between the locators. You can choose to copy a section between locators. You can even insert silence between locators if you like. And the one we're gonna use is insert section at playhead. So let's go ahead and copy this first. So we've copied these two sections. Let's set the playhead here at 25. And then we're going to use the insert section at playhead function, which is control command V. And you can see now we have chorus, verse, chorus, verse. We need one more chorus. So I'm going to select the chorus and we're going to go ahead and copy that again. We're going to go after the second verse here and we're going to paste that in or insert that in. And so now we have chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge. We need one more chorus right here before the outro. You know, let's use the shortcut for it, control command V, and there we go. And when you use those cut insert time functions, it will also copy and paste over your markers. Now, I realize that not all songs are like trimmed directly to the bar line. Some sections may come in on the offbeat, like the and of four or the E or a uh of four, just depending on what the rhythm is, or maybe there's like sort of like a pickup. So you may have to go back in and do some manual trimming uh, to correct things like that. Another thing you may find is that the end point of the song is not long enough for your full musical arrangement. If that's the case, you just grab it right here and pull it all the way out. It doesn't really matter where you put it, just put it somewhere after your last section and you'll be all good. Because one thing you'll notice is if you're using loops, the loops will get cut down uh, because the loops only go to the end of the song. They don't you know, go indefinitely. And while we're talking about loops, if you are looping out your regions like I'm doing here, you may choose to convert these to regions and, or what used to be called convert to real copies. You can get to this function by right clicking or control clicking, go down to convert and then convert loops to regions, or you can use the shortcut control L. And what that'll do is it'll get rid of all of the loops and just convert each loop into a real copy of the region. And before we move on to arrangement markers, I have two last little things I want to wrap up with markers. The first is a quick and easy way to navigate your project by markers. If you have a number pad on your keyboard, you can use the one through nine number keys on the number pad to navigate between your different markers. So one's gonna be your first marker, two is gonna be the second marker and so forth and so on. So not only does this move the playhead around, it also moves the cycle range around so you can jump around and quickly audition different sections of your song.
And you can do it while playback is running as well. Now, one other thing you can do is if you've already created markers and you want to work with arrangement markers, you can click here and you can select convert to arrangement markers. What this will do is it'll convert each of your normal markers into arrangement markers. And you can also do the opposite. If you want to create new markers from arrangement markers, you can select this option as well. So what I'm gonna do off screen is I'm gonna go back to what we originally had and let's create some arrangement markers from scratch. Okay, so let's talk about arrangement markers. The benefit of arrangement markers is that the content within a section can be tied and can be connected to the arrangement marker. So with arrangement markers, you can move them around and easily sort of change the arrangement of your song. So let's go ahead and create five new arrangement markers here. I'm just gonna set the playhead at bar one, click the plus button, and you'll see it automatically labels it intro. Let's move over to bar nine. This calls it a verse, it's actually not a verse. Remember, this was our chorus, but I'm gonna leave it there for now. Go to 17, create another one. 25, create another one. And 33, create another one. So it's got intro, bridge, and outro auto-named correctly. Let's click on the verse here and let's change this to chorus. And let's change the chorus over to verse, or you can click rename if you need a different name for a section. Now there is a key command available to create an arrangement marker, but by default in Logic, there is no shortcut assigned to that key command. So if that's something you wanna do, you can open up your key commands, search up create arrangement marker, here it is, click learn by key position, and then create your own custom shortcut for it. I'm not gonna do that for now. And then what I'm gonna do is colorize these arrangement markers as well. So option C, and let's just colorize each one of these so they look uh, distinct from each other, and there we go. So again, the big benefit of arrangement markers is it really makes copying and pasting and moving sections around really simple. So if I grab the chorus here and I just drag it over here, it's gonna move that marker, but also the content for that section to the end of the song, and it's going to automatically shuffle everything over to the left. Additionally, you can hold option to duplicate a section. So if I wanna duplicate my chorus over there, Maybe we'll duplicate the verse here, one more chorus at 41, and then one more chorus at 57. So in a lot of ways, it's actually quicker to build out your arrangements this way rather than using the cut insert time functions. The one thing that's a little bit tricky is the content that's inside of uh, that arrangement marker is going to be tied or connected to the arrangement marker. So for example, if I delete a chorus and then I press delete again and it deletes the actual marker, or if I move a section around, it's going to move everything with it. So if you need to suspend that connection, you can click here and select suspend content connection. And now the marker will no longer be tied to the regions within that section. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. And as I mentioned earlier, you could create arrangement markers from regular markers, but you can also create regular markers from your arrangement markers if you wish. The two drawbacks for arrangement markers and why I don't use them is one that those navigation shortcuts I showed you for the number pad do not work with arrangement markers. And if you hide your global tracks, your arrangement markers will not show up here at the top of the timeline. So that's personally why I use uh, regular markers over arrangement markers. Once I get all of my regular markers uh, put in, there's no really real need for me to use arrangement markers by that point because the arrangement is already built out. But I'll let you choose which method you prefer. So that's it for this video. That's how you can build out musical arrangements using markers, arrangement markers, and the cut insert time edit functions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.